Markov networks, which is so, so what we saw so far is known as Bayesian networks or directed graphical models. What we are going to see now are known as Markov networks or undirected graphical models. Okay. So, let us start with that. So, a lot of this material and even the previous lecture has been taken from this textbook uh, from the relevant chapters. Uh, so, to motivate these undirected graphical models or the Markov networks, right, let us consider a new example now. So, we have dealt with this student example. Now, we look at a different set of students. So, suppose this is the situation that I have. I have four students A, B, C, D. Okay. A and B study together sometimes. A and B and C study together sometimes. D and C and A and D. Okay. So, every edge indicates whether these two students study together or not. For now, for whatever reason, I am not drawing directions on these edges. Okay. And if you do not see an edge, I mean that these students never study together for whatever reason. Right? So, A and C, C do not study together and B and D do not study together. Now, let us consider this situation that all of these are attending some lectures and there was some misconception in class because of some mistake with the instructor made. Okay? And so, there is some concept which everyone in the class has not understood properly. Now, once they go back and being good students, they go back and read the material, lecture slides and other things and also think about the subject instead of doing other things. So, in the course of time they of course, may or may not clear this misconception right? because I would have I mean not I, but some other instructor of course, uh, would have made some mistake and then they went and thought about it and they realized oh this is not correct, this is incorrect and that misconception again is a random variable because it could or could not have been cleared. Okay. Now, what happens after that is that these people are also going to now study together. So, each of them independently thought of the problem and may be or may not clear the misconception. But now, when they study together, now there is this further chance that if one of those students in the group had cleared the misconception, then maybe the other students misconception would also be clear because hopefully and uh, desirably that student passes on this information to the other student, there is no relative grading. And we are now interested in knowing whether the student still has the misconception. Okay, and we are no interested in knowing this for all the four students. So, what is the joint distribution that we are interested in and what are the random variables that we have? We are interested in knowing for every student whether that student still has the misconception or not. So, what are the random variables in here? So, think of that diagram that we have your set is students and you want a random variable to right. So, we will what we will do is we will have this random variable which a b c d which tells us whether student a has a misconception or not, student b has a misconception or not, student c has a misconception or not and student d has a misconception or not. Is that fine? Okay. Everyone is fine with the setup. Okay. Now, what is the joint distribution that I am interested in? P of a comma B comma C comma D right that is the joint distribution that I am interested in okay. fine. Now, A B C D can take on values 0 for no misconception and 1 for misconception. So, it is slightly non intuitive, but 1 means there is a misconception. Okay. How do we model this using a Bayesian network? So, now, why this question? Because you can see that there is some dependence, right? Uh, just as uh, grade dependent on the recommend, uh, sorry, the recommendation letter dependent on the grade and so on. Here, whether D would have a misconception or not depends on whether D has resolved it himself or herself, and also whether any of their partners have resolved it, right? So, there is a dependence between the partners also. So, how will you represent this joint distribution? Now, here is where the discussion of I maps helps, right? That I am asking you that given a joint distribution. So, I have not given you the table, but I have given you an intuition about what kind of independencies exist in this joint distribution. What are the independences which exist in this joint distribution? A is independent of C, 
is A independent of C given B or D right. So, A is independent of C given B and D. What is the other independence which holds? Yeah. So, I do not need to actually give you a table, I just gave you the problem setting and from that problem setting you are able to make these assumptions that these independences hold in the network right. So, you see that what happens in an IMAP you do not need the table you can just understand your world and based on that make some assumptions. So, that is the first thing that you will do right whenever I ask you to draw a Bayesian network the first thing that you will do is think about what are the independence assumptions which hold in the distribution either based on data which is this table, but most case most likely that will not be given to you or just your knowledge about the world right. So, here you are using your knowledge about the world and you are telling me that these two independences actually hold in the distribution right. Now, our job is simplified what do we need to do now just draw a Bayesian network which encodes these independences. That is what it means right I am asking you for an I map that means I just want a Bayesian network which can encode these independences. So, first let us just quickly draw that Bayesian network. How many nodes will that Bayesian network have? 4 ok. So, let us just quickly draw it. How many of you are not falling for this? Ok good. So, let us try right uh, we will try this one network uh, what are the independences that it encodes you are now drawing a Bayesian network right that is what I wanted to draw what is the independence that it encodes A is independent of C given B D. So, half of the job is done right what is the other thing which I needed B is of D does that happen B is independent of D given A comma C is that what I wanted right, but it implies that B is not independent of D given A comma C because of what of what cause causal reasoning evidential reasoning or explaining away. If I know C can B and D be independent of each other. So, this think of this again as this was the grade in the course this was the students intelligence and suppose this was the difficulty of the course right. Now, if I know that the grade was bad D and I cannot be independent of each other right because if I know that the grade was bad and if I know that I was high then can I set the probability of D to be low to high right because if the student was intelligent and if the grade is bad then it has to mean that the course was difficult right. So, that is why I and D now no longer can be independent. If I know the value of I there will be some belief of about D which will change if I have given G right. So, that is the similar situation. So, whenever you have this kind of a structure where you have two parents and a child ok there will always be some dependence between parents in real life also right ok. So, B is independent of D given A comma C that is the additional independence which is getting encoded which we did not want. So, then maybe let us try a different network right how about this one what are the independences that it encodes and the second one does it satisfy we want B to be independent of D given A comma C does that happen what is the independence that it encodes actually B is independent of D unconditional right irrespective of whether I know A or C these are like our root nodes in the original graph right I and uh, D or whatever it was they do not depend on anything else. So, they are always going to be independent right is that fine. So, now you can go back and try any Marco any Bayesian network that you want to draw and you will not be able to come up with a Bayesian network which encodes these two exact set of independences that you want right. So, that is a problem right. So, because for this distribution you do not really have a perfect map. So, what is a perfect map? A perfect map is an I map which has exactly the same independence relations as implied in the distribution. So, instead of that subset you will have a equal to right. 
Now you cannot come up with a perfect map for this distribution. And this is just four random variables, and you would have thought that, I mean, with four, if I can't do this, imagine if I have 20 or 30 or 100 or million or whatever, right? So that's why Bayesian networks are not a solution for all the kind of independences or all the kind of distributions that you might want to encode, right? There are certain distributions for which you cannot really come up with an equivalent Bayesian network or at least a perfect Bayesian network, okay? Uh, now the problem here is that, so what's the problem here actually? Why is a directed graphical model not suitable for this example? What is the problem here? Yeah, there is no sense of direction here, right? Because you cannot say that A depends on D or D depends on A. They both are equal partners, right? Both of them study together. Both of them contribute equally to the discussion and so on, right? So you can't really say that one depends on the other, right? So a directed edge between two nodes is not meaningful in this case, right? And what we actually want is not this direction. What we want is to capture the strength of the interaction between two, right? So now A and B may study together, but maybe when they study, they typically end up playing video games or whatever, right? So they probably have a much smaller association as compared to B and C, a B and C, for example. They might have a stronger association or things like that, right? So what we want to capture is these strength of the association between two random variables is what we desire in these kind of distributions. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let's see. So what we'll do is we'll move from directed graphical models to undirected graphical models. And what's our aim? What's the basic aim that we have when we are coming up with graphical models? What's our one single most desired? Everyone? 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 Come on. Factorization, right? We want to come up with a simplified factorization of the joint distribution, right? So we want to, every Bayesian network was associated with what? Come on. Independence assumptions and what else? What did you have associated with the Bayesian network? The, the conditionals and the marginals, which were the factors of the joint distribution, right? So our aim of coming up with a network, whether Markov or Bayesian, is to get a hold of these factors which are associated with the graph. That's what we care about because once we have these factors, we want to believe that the joint distribution can be expressed as a factorization over this graph. That's what our aim is. Okay? So let's be clear about that. That's what we ultimately want. We are not just interest, interested in drawing graphs for the sake of it. We want to eventually get to a factorization of the joint distribution. That's the thing that we care about, okay? So this is also known as a Markov network. And this Markov network exactly captures the interactions that we had, right? So we are not asking the questions of independence yet. But what we are saying is that these are the interactions or these are the dependencies, if you may, between the different random variables in the Markov network. Now, how do we parameterize this graph? Now, what does this question mean? If I had asked you this question, for a Bayesian network, how do we parameterize this graph? What would your answer be? The conditional parameterization, right? So remember all this. We moved from the joint parameterization to a conditional parameterization when we are doing Bayesian networks, right? So there the answer was straightforward that the parameters associated with the Bayesian network are the conditionals or the marginals or we were calling them as local probability distributions for every node in the graph, right? And in most cases, these local probability distributions were conditional probability distributions except for the root guys where we did not have a conditional probability distribution. So now in the case of a Markov network or an undirected graphical model, what, so I'm going to use these terms interchangeably, factors, parameters, conditional distributions and so on. What are the factors associated with the graph? Factors, parameters, conditional distribution. So what do we need to have with every node? So if this were a directed graph, what would I have here? I would have the distribution D given A, right? Now I'm asking you what should I have in the case when this is not a directed graph. A 
can again have a conditional distribution, right? Why not? I can again write P of D given A. How many if we say we can have a joint conditional distribution? Okay. Only a few honest people. How many if you say we can't have a conditional distribution? So I got two answers for the first question and two answers for the second question. You guys don't understand the concept of a universal set. Uh, okay. 